Welcome to the Podness with Face, Pat, and Tiz. Well, face, I'm glad you asked that because I damn sure I thought like it. I was wondering what the hell was going on. Nigga came in looking like interview with a vampire or some shit. <laughs> I didn't know what the fuck was happening. Oh my god. But let me tell y'all some tell y'all some other shit real quick. So my my kid, you know it, it's about to be February and shit, Black History Month. So with our governor. Um, yonking and shit. He already did um shit about no no teaching a race or whatever. So I've been in schools to make sure I which I gonna teach black. Like so my my kids came home with a book. My my baby girl came home with a book the other day. My mom came. I'm like, I bet I'm gonna check it out. I'm gonna look at it. I never really look at their books. I really never go through their books to see for content. So I just picked it up. I was reading through it. On the first page, they gave a little preface. They was like, on page this and this, they say he was shot and killed. If you don't feel like feel comfortable saying that to kids, just say he died. I'm like, okay, cool. I can understand that. So I went to the page. That one, the thing that got me, it said Martin Luther King was shot and killed in 68, which he was, whatever, whatever. This is the next line that got me. It's like, because he fought for the poor people, he was given a special um, funeral where he lived in Atlanta, Georgia. I was like, hold the fuck up. Fuck you mean poor people? Don't you mean black people? Or are you trying to connect poor with black? Because all black people won't poor, motherfucker. If you want to talk about poor, it was the same amount of poor people. It was black and white at the same time. He didn't die for poor people. <laughs> at that point, he was starting to get into that financial equality, and he was speaking on financial equality for all. But please understand, Martin Luther King did not just fight for poor people. He fought for equal rights. You feel me? Equal rights, equal treatment. He wanted that. I have a dream. Jews and Gentiles, little black girl, little white boy. You feel me? Not, I have a dream, the rich and the poor. Come on, that shit pissed me off. Now, I got in-laws in the school system. You feel me? They, they on like school boys in the other county. So we sent her a picture. When I said her reaction was worse than mine. <laughs> I'm like, mm. yeah, I need to talk to a principal or a school board or something because just like all these Caucasians can go to their school boards and have books removed or the silliest shit, I want this book removed from my from my daughter's school because first of all, it was written by somebody who won't America. So your skew on it is a little bit differently. You feel me? The, the book is all like, I say, 10 pages. You can't really do over even the, the main highlights of his life in 10 pages. I can yeah. give him a book. There's 10 pages about Martin Luther King. Shit, that's all we learn every freaking day of our lives, every Black History Month. Mm -hmm. I'm looking for, I'm looking for the new <laughs> stuff with the with the amount and, and, and how can I, what's the word I'm looking for? With the the strides we made with technology these days, it's so much easier for teachers to bring other Black inventors or other Black people that have history because we have more people than Martin Luther King, Rosa Parks, Malcolm X, Benjamin Manica, Booker T. Washington. We got more than five. More inventions than just them five people. More people than them five people. Most things that we use, and I'm just not talking about we as black people, we as humans use on a daily basis were invented by black people. If you get in your car and you don't want to have an accident and you get to a stop, you get hot in the summertime and you want to have some fun, you pull out a water gun and you pump that motherfucker as a super soak, guess what? Wow, black man made that too. Just little have small things. Have the shit in your cell phone and Bluetooth technology. Yeah, that's black people black too. Man. Video game. If you like chocolate chip cookies, if you like chocolate chip cookies, thank a black woman. If you like she video game together. systems, <laughs> that's a black person yep. too. Shoot, no, safety belt. Don't get me. Don't Traffic get me wrong. Stuff. Don't get me wrong. The wrench. A, I ain't gonna say I'm a pro. I'm not one of them. I'm pro black. I'm all about black. No, because I see the, the beauty of other cultures too. But with me being predominantly black, I still the stuff that we've been told it's okay. Just forget about it. This is a long time. Well, fuck that. Forget about this shit. 
We learn about medieval times. Why can't we forget about that bullshit? We learn about all this other shit of all these other cultures that melted pot into America, but the one that kept y'all alive, that kept y'all on our back, the one who we put America on our backs. If it, if it won't for as I, King also. It won't, if it won't for this, this country wouldn't be what it is today. Even when we were enslaved and y'all was whipping our asses, we still wanted to fight for our country that we lived in. You feel me? Even when we was getting bullshitted here, we still had people go to Vietnam and fight for what the goal was. Even though at home, they families and them were still getting bullshit. Give us the respect we deserve. And the question I guarantee no racist can answer. Why y'all hate us? If we go by the history that you guys try to teach, you guys brought us over here. Even though I'm a smarter to already know, Africans circumnavigated the globe before Columbus and all the mother motherfuckers. <laughs> Get, get, your, get your knowledge out. But we're going to go back to y'all teachings. Y'all brought us over here. We didn't volunteer. Y'all brought us over here to make us do slave labor. Hated us then. They freed us, and you still hate us now. Why? It's like me going to buy a cow and hating the cow every time, ever since I bought it. I know it's going to do work for me because I bought it to do work. Okay. The work done, I can free. I'm not going to hate my cow. You hate something that's better than you because you see the greatness in it. And for some reason, regardless of what you do, you can't mimic it. You can only try to copy it. You can't mimic and go forth. All you can do is copy. Copy, just like putting on a copy machine. I got sitting right here beside me. Copy can come out the exact same. No different. Because what you try to do differently, it comes about looking just like what we got. Originality, but yours is false. That's my rant, man. And another thing. Fuck y'all. <laughs> I just, oh, matter of fact, I saw a quote today. Uh, oh, somebody posted up. This, I don't know. This was off Twitter. Melissa Kimball. This world does not move without Black creativity. So, happy Black History now, Month and happy Black Future Month. <clears throat> now, because I won't hear last week with y'all, I had a point I wanted to bring up about those definitions, Black and White. Um, me personally, I don't know if they've been changing the dictionary because I read the dictionary in like a year or two just to read it. Um, but the original definition of a black and white, I don't really think that people should be dis- de- depicted by those unless we're going to change the terms. Um, white, pure, innocent. It's pure. Fuck that. It's the opposite. Black, negative, bad. Fuck that. It's the opposite. Black is the universe. But my thing is, look at science. My thing is, is, look at science, man. Look at science. In the past five years, they've tried everything they can to come up with a darker black, a new black, a better black. The black is black of everything. Now we got the black is black paint. You can see it. But no one's trying to come up with a new white paint. No new white paint, huh? Black, black, black. Black, 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 black. But no white. I'm black at the back. I'm black. <laughs> CB4, that's classic. <clears throat> now, with all this, please, viewers, don't get it twisted. I have nothing against all white people. I have nothing against none of all any type of people. But I don't like people on certain sects on all cultures. It's black people I don't like. The ends I don't like. It's every culture I don't like. If you know me to know me, you knew me since college. You know I used to live in an international dorm. Mm. Mm-hmm. For a motherfucker like me who don't like people. But my thing is, I never shit on the entire culture. I pick out a person and something about that person I don't like. And that's the person. I can't send that to everybody. Just as these three people right here on the screen, we have something in common. And it's just our skin. Our mentalities and how we act are all three differently. That's why we all collectively come together as the partners and we make something special then, you feel me? People don't look at us and see, oh, them three niggas are they all like, hell no, because even our conversations are different. How I talk is different than how y'all talk, you feel me? From what I write down, y'all can tell who wrote it by how I write it. <laughs> I mean, I want people to see the beauty in our individuality. But also with that beauty and the individuality, as a whole people see the beauty in our differences because our differences is what's gonna make us come together one day 
It ain't gonna happen today. I know it. I ain't stupid. I ain't even gonna be alive when that unity of all people happen. I know this because for so long it hasn't been. But it is possible because in the past and other cultures and other places it happened. Unity is possible. But first, open up your ears and your mind to see the truth in your face. Division is being placed on you purposely. And we all fall for it. We're all victims to fall for that bullshit. But once we all take a stand with eyes open, as minds are, as wide as our minds, unity is possible, people. It is. Unity. What's up, guys? Like Rick Bang. <laughs> Welcome to the party. Show with three friends separated by distance. Connected by brotherhood, having weekly conversations that you can join in on. And as always, I am one third of the partners. It's your boy, Tiz. Happy Black History Month. And I'm along with. Other third of the partners. Uh, this is a hoodie. I'm not vampire in Brooklyn or nothing. This is just red in the inside and black on the outside. And, and, and they thought I had, they thought I had like a, a spawned vampire costume on when I first came on so this this is a hoodie I know that audio listeners is not understanding what's going on but yeah this is the pattern one I'm the other third of the potters and I'm along with the other person that told me about this oh, shit. Pause, and the guy that just ran it was that and was that and was that and man it's your boy's face if you look on the screen and you see my name it says Fossey R. Trey that's how you say that name for real. But call me face, man, because most people can't pronounce it. What's happening, man? That nigga said, this is the right way to say it. But y'all stupid. So y'all going to say it this way. So that's what we're going to say. <laughs> Some people call oh, me Pace. Pace? Pace Artie. Some people call me Pace. No, some, check this. Some people call me Pace Artie. <laughs> you, you you miss letters in the name <laughs> you can't read it ain't Artie it's another R in it motherfucker it's Artrey <laughs> Pahasi Arter uh, Pahasi Arter Artery it's gonna make it an E whether it wanna be one or not you're gonna be an E today I ain't gonna waste my time found you out go ahead and take this <laughs> And it's the thing. RT, nigga. <laughs> I used to spell I used to spell R Trey with two E's at the end to try to make it easier. My <laughs> so like no fucking shit. <laughs> you can't read, you just they say that. Right ain't my fault. R Tree. Pay ha see our tree. Pay ha see our tree. Damn it sound like it sound like <laughs> pay how see our tree sound like uh, a message from one of our live uh bots. <laughs> one go rent Vnigo. Vern go Vernigo and all that good I saw that. I saw that. I thought they said nigga the first time. I was, I was <laughs> second. How y'all niggas doing? <laughs> niggas in the uh, royalty sense. Not niggas. Uh, been running around for the past couple of days, but I'm all right. <laughs> running, running around. Can't keep running away. Can't keep running away. Can't keep running away. I'm um, sorry. I took that too far. So how your week Feeling going? Feeling nostalgic. Everything all right? Doing, everything's cool, man. Everything's good, man. Uh, got a whole, like a whole rush of confidence or whatever. Got a lot of stuff done today. Thinking about the future. Went to a couple of banks, about a business loan. Okay, big Whatever. <clears throat> come on, come on. Put to, money where the mouth is. Oh. Advice, advice from um, the step pops, whatever. You know, go to a couple of banks, see what they say about the interest rates or whatever. Try to get this book done. So. Mm -hmm. Invest in yourself. Yeah, but 
Yep, that's that's pretty much it, amongst other things. Uh, I actually, out of the blue this weekend, actually did a quick run to Richmond to say happy birthday to somebody and then ran out because they randomly invited me. And I was like, well, yep, I ain't doing nothing. Yeah. <laughs> Boy, you sounded thirsty as hell right there. Yep, yep. I, 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 I had my clothes on waiting. I was hoping somebody would call me. I'm ready. Well, you to are, Where do I need to be? Drop me a pen. Normally, I don't do nothing, though. That's the thing. I don't be doing anything big or anything. So it's like, oh, wow. So I've done something. Like, go out. And I, and I'm and for real, for real, I'm not a person to go out anymore. Hmm? So you was happy, huh? And I was like, oh, yep, something different. Something different. Somebody gave me an excuse to, to go, go out somewhere. Right on. I can't be mad at it, man. Well, how, is there any way, anything you need support on this week? Uh, I heard you mention the book. Is there anything we need to do to support you there? Um. Well, if uh, anybody, well, with y'all, man, I'm, I'm, I'm good, actually, man. This, you know, this is my weekly therapy or whatever. You know, if it's if I'm going through something, I'm going to hit y'all up on the chat at all times. So. So far, nothing, nothing on the top of my head that at at the time. But as always, I appreciate y'all. And you already know how you be face. Hi, I see. But hey, Artie, oh, I'm good, brother. I can't complain. Um, just grinding, 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 grinding some more. Still in the process of looking for a new place. Um, never in the process. Enjoying work, enjoying life. Um, still a good start to the year. Hasn't turned bad. So still trying to keep up the good positivity. Um, all negativity. I'm giving them judo blocks too. Judo blocks. Um, no negativity. Um, kids is good. Business is good. Um, I can say I'm good. Uh, just a start to the week. So. No real issues. I don't foresee any issues either. Um, so I'm trying okay. to live on that positive way, man, and keep swoosh. I'm riding it, about okay. Well, swoosh on then, play all right now. That's the fuck I'm talking yeah, about. Yeah, yeah. Nike check. How about you, brother? Uh, well, first of all, is it you need me support with anything in any uh any way we need to show up for you as friends? Well, if negativity does go down. Uh, you know, I'm going to hit the chat line or hit that text line and let y'all know so y'all can be my support system. So, but right now, everything's cope steady. Indeed, indeed. Glad cool. that. Um, yeah, how about you, brother, man? Man, I am wonderful, man. Like, this is probably the best week I've had in the past six months. Like, I feel physically healthy. I feel mentally in the best place that I've been. Um and yeah, man, life is good, man. I ain't got no complaints. We 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 rolling this week, man. Everything great. Yes, sir. Rolling, rolling. Before we go any further, what's happening? It, well, before I get to that, how can we support you? Man, I don't need Nathan, brother. I'm I'm goody mob. Okay, not in my next point I was making. Boy, I rolled the shit out of this dude. <laughs> what the fuck? <laughs> Yo, that just went a whole another way. I just wanted to say, I thought he was about to make it profound. I had to put that motherfucker. I had to put that motherfucker down. <laughs> that bitch isn't good. <laughs> Also, also to any um, but also other, also other shit though. Uh, to to any person out there who is a um marijuana or a cannabis supporter, uh, I will be starting to bring some news to the um to the podcast and to the lives on any upcoming or any developments in the um cannabis industry because we do have some things going on and I try to keep myself abreast of everything marijuana wise, not just because I'm a smoker, but because I personally to believe there's the new cash crop to America and slowly but surely as each state becomes legal, fully legal with it, I believe that it's going the, the value of the flower will really grow 
in our commerce. So I'll be keeping y'all abreast um, one or two things a week as I find out things, different laws in different states on um, what's going on. Well, one thing in Virginia, we know that 2024, we're supposed to start selling flour, but for some reason, now the Republicans may want to start changing other shit after we just got all the good shit last year. So um, keep keep up keep up with that. Um, if you are a VA head and you do partake in the cannabis like I do, um, be aware rules may be changing, but if they do, you'll get it from me first. And I will definitely let y'all know. Um, other states out there, I do keep my head to the marijuana news. That's one of the news topics on my Google. So as new laws come from other states, I will be giving them to, to y'all too. Um, I'm not just going to be a Virginia head smoking and just let y'all, other people out there, just get caught up. No, I'm going to look out for everybody because I believe each one, teach one, the knowledge I have, I should share and vice versa. So if y'all know something that I don't and I ain't said, Hey, email us. Um, I read every email. Um, comment. I read every comment too. So I may not comment back as my brother does, but shit, I still read them. So weed is good, isn't it? Yeah, weed is good. Yeah, weed is good. Ain't it? <laughs> it's from the earth. It does. It's from the earth. It, does. <laughs> it is good. It's here for me and you, my brother. For you and for me. <laughs> what we got going on this week, fellas? What we got going on this week? Man, uh, we back with it. Um, nobody voted in time, but we going right into it anyway. The top MCs before 2000. We about to go ahead and kick it right on off. I ain't going to even waste no time with it. <clears throat> about to go ahead and get this next round on done. Let's get it. We about to get it on done. Give me one. Let's get it. There we go. I feel like I'm a little top of them this week. I like that. I'll see that. Yeah. Right on then. then we... Yeah. See that shit. Bro. Oh, this is gonna be. All right. So um, <clears throat> we got the first opening round on our way. We are now in the quarterfinal round. <clears throat> Let's kick it on off. On the first side, we got the number one seed, Eminem. He's going against Big Daddy Kane this week. That's mm. for the shits, man. Um, I'm going to kick this one off. I'll go first. Now, Big Daddy Kane versus Eminem. Um... First, we're sticking to the three categories. So color don't matter. Um, so all those people out here who say Eminem, whatever, whatever, because he's Caucasian, that shit don't matter, man. His skills outweigh his race. I'm sorry. He's actually a good MC. He brings what you need to the table. He got lyricism. He got bars. He got funny bars. He has the flow. He can switch up his flow on different levels. He has the stage presence. Eminem is an all-around MC, and I see why just naturally he would be a number one on any bracket. Um, but in this competition, Big Daddy Kane, I'm sorry. I'm going to say it's a 30. Eminem, 30 is him to me. Lyrical, hand down. Sorry, Big Daddy Kane. Stage performance, I'm sorry. Big Daddy Kane. I mean, uh, what, what's the other one? Uh, <laughs> revenue, what you can make from them. What, what's the third one? Uh, the third, what, what's the third one. one? But we see what marketability. We see what Eminem. Yes, we see Big Daddy Kane. Name ain't mentioned, but so much all these years later, Eminem don't have to come out with shit, and people still talking about Eminem. You feel me? I feel. That 50 years from now, a lot of these rappers that we saying are all great will be forgotten, but a few will be there and Eminem will still be in that and up there. The key thing about him that everybody wants to exclude, you have to include because that makes him unique and genuine. You feel me? Him being a Caucasian and having the skills he has and coming from where he does, what he brings ain't fake. You feel me? He's not a white boy trying to be black 
he's himself. And that's what I see. I've listened to the first album. I've listened to the last album. And I've listened to a few in between. You feel me? Okay. I see the image of the Eminem, but you can also see the, the trickles of Marshall through that as well. I fuck with him. I remember, uh, I don't even know the exact year, but I know we was on a, um, a trip going to LA. And motherfuckers were listening to the Eminem CD. <laughs> You feel me? If you could rock with Eminem on a on a on a trip, it must be good. I have never listened to Big Daddy Kane going on a trip, and I don't think I will. Either. I'm gonna leave it at that. Eminem thirty is his ass. Next, please. Oh, <laughs> god damn. Um, I I got a rare form. Uh, I, yeah, hell yeah. Um, shit. Um, <laughs> I'm gonna start with stage presence. Um, I'm actually gonna get. I want a big daddy came man. Like that nigga used to be the shit. Well, shit, he still is the shit when it comes to stage one. I'm gonna be dancing his ass off, man, and still be like flowing. Don't mess up a breath or nothing. Like you just <laughs> ain't no half stop it. <laughs> Like that nigga be jamming his ass off, man. <laughs> Shit. So uh I get him stage performance. Um, uh, marketability, it's hard for me to argue with that. Uh Eminem is definitely uh through the roof with it. Like he got movies and shit, and and his, his album sales, like the motherfucker is a diamond mine, like restaurants. It's rick it's ridiculous. Um yeah, restaurants. Like he, he's a rich motherfucker, and he he generates a lot of bread. Like just his brand has like made slaughterhouse and other people like relevant. So I, I definitely got to get him marketability, and then uh, the lyricism. Uh, it's tough for me because it's always tough when you got to compare eras because like you got to try to remember like what was it thought of back then as opposed to how we would think of it now? Because obviously the game has evolved. You know, uh, people have built off of what other people have done and improved. So that one's tough because in his day, Big Daddy came with that nigga. Um, damn, man, Eminem done some wild shit. Mm-hmm. Like one of the people that done uh, rhymed the orange and uh, – <laughs> And some other shit like he he ah man it's really hard to rhyme on. I gotta give I gotta <laughs> get Eminem on the lyricism. So uh two one Eminem. Yeah. Come on, Pat. You can go ahead and get on. Your is Pat. Like you know, might as well. Oh no, yeah, we we good, man. Um, Dirty. I already know my decision. Um, Big Daddy Kane. I'm giving him on stage present. Because really, I'd rather listen to Eminem to actually watch a show. I'll give him that. Um, okay. Marketing, it's Eminem. There's nothing else to say. Y'all already said it. It's, it's nothing left else to say. And then lyricism, it's Eminem. And no. I, 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 here's the bias. I'm a, I was an Eminem stan for a long time. Right. I have calmed down on my Eminem stance. But that don't mean shit when it, we're talking about within before the 2000s and what let rap I was actually listening to. By that time when I really got into rap and really was studying it and wanting to be a rapper, Eminem was the prime like class. If the 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 thought was if I can out rap him, then I'm worth being a rapper because nobody was out rapping it. Wow, wow. So. Yeah. Eminem, that's it. Well, that was an easy first round there. Um, Eminem moves on to the uh, next round. This one's next up, down. y'all. We got uh, thirty. Yeah, man. We got Buster, the Busta Bus, ah. the Busta Bus versus DMX. DMX. Who want to take this? Ooh, okay. I'm gonna I'm go first. I'm gonna go first. I'm gonna keep on. I'm gonna keep on going first. Okay. Good matchup. Great matchup. <clears throat> <clears throat> against Yah, Yah, Yah. 
<laughs> Dungeon Dragon. Great, great. Now we want to go to lyricism. Um, that's a, that's a tight battle right there. Just on lyricism. Um, X, um, rest his soul. We know what he can bring. But Buster, I'm sorry. I've heard every one of each man's albums. I'm actually a fan of each man. Um, I can go X, I can go dark, I can go emotional. You feel me? I can go a little, a little hype too. I can go Buster. I can go dark. I can go some emotional. I can get my romance on, but I can give you that super duper hype too. So it all is a matter of what you prefer. Um, looking at his catalog and the length of his catalog and what he's shown that he can do on different levels. I wanted to give us a buster so bad, but X just do something with the words, man. X put me in that mode of like no homo pause or whatever, but DMX lyrics, he puts you in that mental place where you know somebody else has been through what you've been through, you feel me? Without even having to talk to that person. You feel me? Regardless of what it is, you know, he dealing with a shorty, he dealing with death, he just dealing with inner demons. He put you right there with him so you could see through his eyes. You feel me? If you could listen to a CD and a man praying, and you can tell he crying. And from his words, he brings something out of you and make you cry. That's something. Lyricism is X to me. Um, marketability. I'm gonna skip that one. I'm gonna go to the stage show. I'm gonna give it to Buster. Okay. <laughs> okay. I'm gonna get that to him, Buster. I'm going to get out with a Buster stage show. Even though X can bring every emotion out of you on the stage, Buster going to make you party your ass off, dance your ass off. He's going to give you everything. Buster is one of the one of the MCs who's known specifically for the stage show, for what he brings to so much that he brought it from the stage show to when he was, when music videos was a thing, he had some of the, the, prominent music videos like they were telling a story they was on like many movies you feel me like i remember a bit i was like it was in middle school when they put their hands on my ass to see it it was middle school or high school people oh, yeah, that when they come out <clears throat> yeah that was high school that was like some theatrical right there you feel me like boy stage presence gotta get to bust them um so we won one now it all comes down to marketability uh both got movies. Um, both went platinum multiple times. Um, both have longevity in the game. Um, only reason X is not here because X passed. Um, but who could bring in the most money? Who's been in the most different avenues? I'm going to have to give it to Buster due to excess drug use and that it kept him from being able to do certain things. If it wasn't for excess drug use, his marketability would have been so much more. You look at him in Romeo, you almost die. You look at him in the other, the other movie with, the, with Jet Li. You feel me? Look, the movies he had with the Lee, like he was on the plane to go skyrocket to be that super duper duper star you feel me but drug use that 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 muted him that put a glass ceiling on his capabilities to where he was fighting demons most of his career when he could have been making money and doing so much more for others you feel me and himself where buster he had him problems he was able to flourish his money, put people on, do other stuff, and still grow, be in movies, be in other stuff. So, marketability, I'm giving the Buster. I go Buster 2-1. Okay. Woo! This is definitely a tough one. Uh, Pat, do you want to go next, or you want me to take it first? Uh, I can go. Um, all right, so where are we going to go first? 
marketing. Marketing lyrics stage presence. Mm -hmm. All right, man, this is hard. <laughs> this is pause. This is this is a hard one, man. The more I think about it, yo. I'm about to say, you better give me this a bell or a whistle. <laughs> <laughs> Oh man. Um <laughs> marketing, I'm gonna give it to Buster. Like I really I feel like I could give it a DMX. I really feel like this whole thing could be a tie on a on a low, but just cause Buster Rhymes is consistent. Like if Buster says, Hey, I want to come out with an album, it's always an event. Now over the years, it might have the 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 height of the event has may, maybe fizzled down a little bit because we're like used to Busta right now. You know what I'm saying? Any if he do something spectacular, that's something we're expecting anyway. But <clears throat> I'm gonna give it to Busta. Uh, man, stage presence. Nobody can beat Busta on the stage, man. DMX though has a great freaking show. Or whatever. If it gets, if like it, it reminds me of like when Jay was talking about the first time they had DMX on the um back the stage, and he had came out um and backstage. I think he was cuffed. Yeah, on back, I said backstage. I said back to the stage. My bad. <laughs> My bad. Backstage or whatever. He came out. Um, it looked like he was covered in like. Got what he was called. I think it was some type of wine or whatever, but he looked like he was covered in blood and stuff. And then he came out out of the uh the crowd or whatever. And then Jay-Z was just like, and I have to go after that or whatever. He made Jay-Z evolve as a performer, just in general. And I think that should be a point or whatever. But Buster Rhymes is just consistent. Just consistent. But I I will say I as far as lyricism go I'm gonna give it to DMX because all right Bustin' Rhymes as far as technicality and form and cadence and and just showmanship or whatever he has that down pat but as far as like lyricism go and actually saying some as far as a message not to say Buster Buster says something on every out but DMX can say stuff in a way and it could be the it, it might not even be that complex. It's it's almost pockish. You know how Pac can he can say something and describe a situation, and it's not like it's the most complex put together um, array of bars and similes or whatever. But he can convey something so much that you can feel it. Like you can you can visualize it. It's the imagery behind it and everything. You can you can feel the actual feelings you he's going through in the song. So, and I feel like that, that can hit you hard. It, it, even though, even though Busta, yeah, I got another violation, damn. Even though Busta <clears throat> or whatever, he can, he, every once in a while, he could say something or do something, you know, just like in any type of punchline rap or whatever, like, wait a minute, let me rewind that back. You know what I'm saying? But DMX, man, he, he hit you right in the gut, so. I give it, I give DMX to that, but Buster, all in all, I'm giving it to Buster. Okay. And it's a, it's some, it's some other reasons behind this why I'm going to give it to Buster. It's probably because of the next category, but I mean, the next rack it up, but yeah. Buster. Okay. <clears throat> um, I'll just go ahead and give mine now. Uh, you know, Buster's obviously moving on, but uh, I'll say, for stage presence, for a lot of the reasons that y'all kind of highlighted, I'm gonna give it actually DMX. Like I know Buster's like really hype, but Buster also has a hype man. He'll have a mm -hmm. lot of man. He'll fuck around, have dancers jumping on trampolines and shit. DMX will go up there by himself and have niggas like Buster scared to perform after him. By himself, True. he will literally take you through every range of emotion you can feel from like wanting to holler at your girl to remembering that time when you were depressed to 
Remember that time when you was hyping the party to want to fuck a nigga up, to want to just think about your soul, to want to get right with God, to want to like just boohoo and cry and call your mama. Like when I tell you that motherfucker would turn the stage down by himself, like without nothing else, with no 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 homeboy, no homegirl, just him and a microphone and a, a, a dog chain. And he just growled until motherfuckers like the stage is broke. So uh, I would actually get a dick next on that. Um, same thing with lyricism, man. Like I feel like Buster is better at wordsmithing as far as like fitting syllables into um, a stanza, uh, mm -hmm. patterns, etc. Like I, I feel like it when it comes to lyricism with these two, it's kind of like preference. It's kind of like the Biggie versus Pac debate, like. They're both proficient, but it's just a matter of what you prefer. If you prefer more of the wordsmithing or if you prefer more of the emotional impact of the lyric. Um, and I kind of give that to X as far as like what I just prefer. Um, but, you know, that that's kind of really just how I feel like that's one of them things. It's just preference. You know what I mean? Whatever you prefer in, in a MC is kind of where you go. And yeah, so you can't really be wrong on that one. Um, and then the marketability, um, I actually gave that one the X too. Like I, I was like a th a gentleman's thirty over here. Um, like I when I looked at it, and I looked at both of them. I looked at both of them as having dwindling careers on the back end. So I kind of went for what was their marketability, what was their earning potential, what were they doing when they were both at their maximum height. So like, what was Busta Rhymes' peak? What was DMX's peak? And for me, I just feel like DMX in the mid to late 90s was like he he he, he was a walking money machine. Like literally everything he did was dropped. Like he he was seen as one of the best actors in Hollywood for a quick second, just off of a couple of movies. Like he, he was literally like moving like the new Tupac, like as far as like how big his impact was. Like when I say he came in and he literally changed an entire culture because before him, it was party rap. It was the more money we see, I come in. And then that motherfucker came in, get at me, dog. And, and niggas was like, what the fuck is happening? Oh shit, we robbing niggas again. Let's get our boots on and let's go out here and get this. Let's take these shiny suits off, man. Fuck this. It was a real vast shift from like Air Ones to Tim's like overnight. Like niggas all of a sudden with bird chests or fat bellies was out there with white beaters on and, and, and fake dog chains were walking around like, like it, it was a whole thing. Niggas were shaving their heads and shit all of a sudden, all that shit. Like it, it was a thing. So I, I'ma just, I had X30, but I, I, I'm not mad at somebody who says bust around. Like I get that that logic too. This was definitely one of them ones where it's kind of really just preference and, and that's what we ends out. So we got Busta Rhymes moving on to face Eminem in the quarterfinal round. Next up. Woo! Now this one is tough. We got stable mates, if you will, if y'all understand my uh, wrestling lingo out there. Uh, we got two Wu-Tang members against each other. We got the RZA, the godfather of the Wu-Tang. And we got Ghostface Killer, his homeboy from the beginning. One of his first ones, his ride or die. One of the best characters in the Wu-Tang American saga on Hulu. Um, <laughs> and yeah, so uh, who y'all got, man? What we talking? I, I started off and let don't nobody want to take it. I don't mind this one because I'm pretty biased here. So. Uh, be quick for me. Um, I'm gonna say Ghostface Killer 3 0. It, it's pretty easy to me. Um, I know Rizzo got the uh marketability thing as far as like directing movies and shit, but uh, don't nobody really care about the movies he directed. Ain't nobody go see that man with the iron fist bullshit. I ain't heard not one person like hyping that up, like, oh, that's one of the best movies ever. Well, face, we, we know I don't consider you every man when it comes to movies. You have a very uh particular taste you 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 are into what you like so i i i don't ex i'm not surprised <laughs> if you enjoy that movie but uh 
the average person you hear when you start talking about like great Martin movies and you be like Ip Man and and, and and the one and all this shit. You don't hear nobody throwing in motherfucking. Yeah, nigga, we got that man with that iron fist though, nigga. Y'all remember that? That Forrest Whitaker with a little cock out ass coming in trying to fight. Fuck out of here, man. <laughs> um, and, and I'll be honest. Now I will say this: I like the Bobby Digital album. But it was not for anything that RZA did himself. It was completely. I'll be honest, man. The Bobby Digital album. I probably like that whole album for one song. That NYC everything with Method Man. Like, I probably yes, listen, that, I probably I probably burned that fucking CD out off of just that one fucking song. No, matter of fact, it was. I had a tape. So, so that tell you where I was at with my game right then. Um, and I probably fucked that tape up off of just rewinding it back to that one song. So, I, I, <clears throat> space, man. Um, Drink a hind again. As I go inside oh, of mine, I'm a, oh, well, I, I know, man. I know, I know my Ghostface Killer fans gonna be mad at me, but I, I, I don't listen to everything Ghostface. But I would tell you this: he got one song that will make it hard, but he got one song that'll make it hard for me to go against anything he ever made. And it's the joint where he talking about plucking roaches out the cereal box. That's probably All the first. All that I got is you. Man, dude, that's probably the first rap song that made me like boohoo like a little bitch. Cause like that shit spoke to everything from my childhood. Like, like hardcore. Like, man, 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 man. So uh yeah. And then stage presence, man. Fucking Tony Stark is ridiculous out there, man. Motherfucker Tony. out there with the robe on and crushed the stage. Like he is one of the better performers in hip hop to me, um, and then uh, yeah, lyricism man ain't gonna never get you over <laughs> nothing anybody else in the Wu do. So uh, I actually got RZA as one of the worst lyricists in the Wu Tang. So um, yeah, three zero for me, Ghostface. Uh, take it away, fella. I'll go. I'll go. Um. It's not a tough competition, honestly. Um, it'll just be tough competition for people who like Wu Tang all together, because they'll hate to try to match two of them up. You feel me? Um, they want to look at them as a dynamic. Um, but I'm not that person, so yeah, it's not that hard for me. Pause it. <laughs> so, lyricism. I've heard just about an equal amount of both people's music. And like Ghostface stuff more. Regardless if he's featuring or is his own stuff, I just like his stuff more. Um, he's more. I'm not. Let me stop that. I don't think he's more original. I don't think he's more original, but I think his wordplay is better. His wordplay is better. His delivery is better, and what he's saying is more comprehensible. Um. When you look at Mr. Rizza's lyrics, his personality shows in it. His uniqueness comes through his lyrics. He's able to deliver them, but I don't understand all that shit. No, I'm just being honest. I didn't say he wasn't good. I just say I don't understand that shit. Now, I've listened to the Bobby Digital album hundreds of times because my brother had the fucking Bobby Digital tape and listened to it. <laughs> <laughs> so I got to know RZA real well off that album and just shit after that I just picked up because a Bobby Digital album <laughs> I mean so I believe his strengths lie behind the mic and behind the scenes I mean like I believe those are his his main strengths marketability um uh see Ghostface more places you feel me like once again, the rest is like a back. Uh, he plays the back, so I don't know what he's doing. You feel me? So I would have to give it just on the knowledge of what is being done, on knowledge of what it was done to Ghostface. Um, stage performance. Once again, Rizzo's personality comes through on his stage performance. It's you, me? you got to know him to like. You got to. Be in that realm to understand. I'm the level because otherwise, not in that realm. You feel me? Ghostface, I feel like 
he's more versatile. More people can gravitate toward his towards his style when he's performing. Um, he can have a diff, he can have a, a different type of crowd, but still a different type of crowd that's mixed with a little bit of everything. I feel like if you go to a a purely just a RZA concert, if it's not a Wu Tang concert and it's just RZA, and it's just a Ghostface concert, not Wu Tang, just Ghostface. The two crowds you're gonna see will be similar, but the reactions they give to the two different artists is gonna be way different, and you're gonna be more engaged with Ghostface. So, okay. didn't know I was gonna do it, but hey, three O Ghostface. Wow. Well, Pat, as our resident boom bap expert, take it away, King. <laughs> Not only that, I am the resident woo head. When I tell you, ninety nine percent of my is. rap rap uh, um, music that I have ever consumed in my high school to college years was mostly Wu Tang. Yeah, this is a tough one. It ain't too tough, but it's a tough one. Um, all right, love RZA to death. Especially my favorite. I think my favorite RZA. Uh, song is called Tragedy because they had this fight at the end of the um, music video that looked like some Dragon Ball Z shit pretty much but he he he's more of the man behind the man um, at the desk to me like when it comes to stuff I, I see him as far as leadership more uh, than, in Wu-Tang than performer pretty much so let me get right into it. Um, everything is Ghostface. Everything is Ghostface. <laughs> like Ghostface is like the soul of Wu Tang. You know what I'm saying? Like RZA okay. wouldn't pull. RZA can't pull this off. Like as we seen in the actual show, RZA can't pull this off without his brethren or whatever. And one of the key points of that is Ghostface. He's kind of he's kind of the soul of it. Like some people could say it's Meth Man, it could say it's Jizza, this, that, and the third, or whatever, but Ghostface is consistent. Just straight up consistent. He has like it was one year, and and I mean it's a current year, like I think it was like two years ago. He had like three projects drop that whole year. He has three studio albums, three studio albums under his belt he's like out of everybody in the wu-tang he has the most freaking albums and he is steadily coming out even when even when i would say the height of their fame and success had fizzled out he was still there dropping albums and mixtape and music consecutively like they they he he got on a def jam he like he's just is Ghostface like when you think of rappers or whatever? When you definition if, of of a rapper or whatever, he's one of them rappers in that list, along with Meth Man. But he's one of them in that list you first think of, like, and he got that presence. It's that presence about him, like as far as stage show or whatever, like all in all, like. I would say in lyrics, I would still say I still I understand some of RZA's lyrics or whatever. But just like you said, Tiz, with that one song or whatever, no one like I never heard anybody capture like what you actually go through in a, in a, in in a slum or in a project like that or whatever. Like some of the things he said, I felt that when I was living in Portland in the 80s like you know what i'm saying like so all in all um when we hug these mics we get busy come and have a good time with g-o-d make you snap your fingers and wiggle scream shout laugh and just giggle shake that body party <laughs> that body it's ghost it's ghost shoot kanye just kanye and push the t actually use that in a in a freaking for a freaking hook, and that was just a part of his verse. He's That's still it. pushing the culture. It's Ghost. <laughs> ghost face. Tony Starks. Captain points. America. <laughs> and he moves on to the next round, fam. 
Um, and then we move on to the last of this side of the bracket. We're going to finish up this side, uh, the next side of the bracket on next week's episode. But let's finish it up. Let's see who's moving on to the quarterfinals, man. Nas. Nasir. Nasty Nas. Mr. Uchiwale versus E-40. Fody Walter. Sprinkle me, man. Sprinkle me, man. Big time up, time up. I'll take this one. I'm going to be honest. After outside of one album, lyrically, Nas has not moved. I'm going to just put it there. Leave it at that. Hate me if you want to. Yeah, I'm gonna hear it in the comments. I know hip hop heads is gonna kick my ass. Whatever, man. I don't give a fuck. I'm, I'm not That's... moved by it. E40, I love his like he's his lyrics are literally the soundtrack to everybody because everybody uses his slang. His slang has definitely become the slang of America at different points just off of him. So and I actually like what he be saying in his raps. Like, he talked that ball shit. And, and if you're going to talk that ball shit and make that your lane, then be great at it. And he is that. Big time up, time up. Uh, so, yeah. And I think that as far as reinventing himself, like, the amount of times he's come out with albums and the amount of eras he's lived through and rapped through and still been, like, to me, not only lyrically relevant, but also musically relevant. Bang Foldy Water for me. Um, stage presence. I would actually get us to nod. Um, I feel like he commands the stage pretty well, actually. And um, his use of different lighting and the way he uses a uh, certain prop, I, I actually appreciate it. So I I'm going to get that to nod. Um, so it comes down to marketability. Um, with this one, this is hard. Because I have to be honest and fair. I don't like this nigga. Um, Nas is more marketable. Um, between the movies and the acting and the, uh, the tech deals and the, the rap itself, like, he got it. I can't argue it. So uh, Nas 2-1, man. Fucking A. Boo, nigga. Boo you. Boo you, nigga. Now I'm gonna start. I'm gonna. I'm gonna. I'm gonna go second. So I've already said on past episodes. I don't listen to Nas shit. I don't like Nas music. Don't get it twisted that I don't like up north music because I love Jay Z music, but I don't fuck with Nas catalog. He has at, at most five songs that I like. Now, Forty Wody, I like a lot more Forty Wody than I do now. Oh, so dude. let's get into it. Lyricism, Forty Forty Wody lyrics, Forty Wody. You feel me? I can create some lyrically that moves the nation to change what they say. Nas, your lyrics, yeah, they're good. I'll give it to you. I'm not going to say you're not a good lyricist. That's not what I'm going to say. But Fody Wode, his lyrics speak to me. The fact that you keep calling him Fody Wode. <laughs> Fody Wode, man. <laughs> it, it sounds better than E-40 to me. E-40. Fody Wode. <laughs> so marketability. I'm not going to straight it out. We just give this one to Nas because both men have been in several movies. I don't know about any tech deal, so that's no information to me. Thank you for educating me on that, my brother. Um, but mm -hmm. I'm going to say it's almost head-to-head -head with marketability because Fody will be doing his goddamn thing. And he got some branding deals and some shit going on for him. If it's just like Nas do. But if it come down to it based on the knowledge that I have on both of them streams of income, I'm going to give it to Nas. Unfortunately, I really didn't want to give him that a damn one. And then when you get to stage presence. Mm. 
got? I'm a down south head. I'm a down south head at heart. You feel me? So uh, I'm not gonna be biased on either person because neither one of them are truly down south for me. So no, nah, you, you you give a good show. You, you can move the crowd. You, you, your lyrics speak to them. Those who are fans of you. Um, but one, I'm not, I'm not one of them. So it's not gonna speak to me. Now, I don't think I would ever be in a Nas concert. Um, now, Foley Woden, that's going to be in totally different environment. You feel me? You want to have some hyphy shit going on. You're going to have a lot of energy going on. And Foley Woden is going to give you a, a, a oh, laid back Foley oh, show. But just off his lyrics, you feel me? just off his lyrics, he incites that, in, that energy in other people. You feel me? So, to be a laid back person and my words make you get up and move and jam, I got to be doing something right up on the stage. So I'm going to give it to 40 Wody, 2 1. 40 Wody with the sneak in. Pause. <laughs> I'm sorry. I don't even want to fuck Go ahead, Pat. <laughs> All right, y'all. Uh, um... You know, most of the time, I agree with my brothers. There's not that many things we disagree with. Oh, but these niggas done lost their damn mind. These, <laughs> these niggas done lost their damn mind. This is Nas, man. I'm going to just talk my shit right now, y'all. Y'all can talk shit about me later on when I finish, but this is motherfucking Nas against E-40. You have lost your goddamn mind. Whose world is this? It's mine, it's mine, it's mine. <laughs> Street dreams are made of these. Y'all have lost your motherfucking mind. <laughs> I don't you can sprinkle some shit somewhere <laughs> else. You can go sprinkle your your uh your sprinkler system and go grow your gas somewhere or whatever. Like hell the fuck no marketing Nas. <laughs> he's still look. He's been fighting. Nah, I ain't even gonna say that. Like. It's been years now or whatever. And they gave it, they gave Grammy the Nas just off of pure, pure legendary status or whatever. I ain't even gonna say I like the last two Nas albums, I liked it better than the album he got for the Grammy or whatever. I'm not gonna lie. It's not every freaking song that I like from Nas at all. But he must be out your mind. He has songs where he personified money. When he personifies the gun, he has a song where he tells a whole story backwards. <laughs> called Rewind. I don't give must a be damn. out your. I don't care if you don't give a damn. I don't give a damn that you don't give a damn. <laughs> motherfucking nah. <laughs> Put that motherfucking point up there. Must be out your goddamn mind. <laughs> I love it. You lost your goddamn mind. I can't believe y'all nigga. I understand it's good. Nah, it ain't your thing or whatever. Ain't you do no realize how both way. is for Nas, though, right? Exactly, and that, that should tell you how great he is. You hate that nigga, but you got to give him that point. Just like we hate LL Cool J, but we got to give him some points. Not all the time. Hell no, because I saw, I just saw Deep Blue Sea for the second time, and that nigga is stupid as shit in that movie. But anyway, we ain't talk about <laughs> it. Was, my head is Fuck like a nigga. shark's fin. Fuck that nigga. We definitely Deep agree with that. Hey, on this, y'all lost your goddamn mind. It's Nas. We done. We done. We don't got to say no more about that. <laughs> well, uh, <laughs> well, y'all hip hop heads don't got to say shit. I already said it for y'all. I don't, y'all don't even got to say shit in the comments. Y'all say no, something to my brothers. I will fuss you out. We know my damn that. self. <laughs> Pat blows a gasket. Oh, yeah. This is going to be fun. Oh, yeah. That's, I'm popping that up. ASAP. And, and, and look at and look and look at the bracket next. Me putting the nail down. You got Ghostface Killer versus Nas next. That is an awesome one. I want to see a versus. This then you got Eminem and Busta Rhymes. And they talking about doing a versus with Eminem and Busta Rhymes. Mm -hmm. This is awesome. This is awesome. I want Nas and Ghostface on right now. I'm gonna start. All right, I'm done, Red. I'm done.
He done said all that, and I still don't give a fuck. I don't know now. I still don't give a fuck that you don't give a fuck. Okay, as long as we still love you. <laughs> you still my nigga, man. Love you to death. I already know. <laughs> but now nah, like, yeah, um, <laughs> you don't got to be. <laughs> uh, next week, tune in for more debate, more argument, more grievance, and more outrageous hot takes. As we move more people into the quarterfinals, we do the other side of the round two bracket. We got Red Man going against the teacher, KR1. We got Tupac versus Method Man. We got oh. Cop versus Scarface. And we got Cool G Rap versus Jay-Z. Oh, this hurts. We got a lot. We got, we got, we got one for y'all next week, man. So tune in. The, the vote will be up. I'll have the round two vote for, for the other side. I'm gonna give y'all another chance, Pod Squad. The uh, link will be on the Twitter page, Pat, if you want to throw it on the other ones too, so we can get uh people to rock out. But yeah, man, oh, yeah. I'm, I'm gonna have the link up tomorrow. So Wednesday through uh Wednesday through Tuesday, you'll be able to put your votes in for this round two to help us make this next quarterfinals. Otherwise, we're gonna have uh Pat blowing a gasket again. Mm-hmm. Nah, nah, nah. I know I I like that kind of bad. Yeah. Thank you, sir. I, I'm, 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 this is why I did this bracket specifically for you and your hip hop headedness. So, uh, hold on, I don't know how that sounded, but anyway. <laughs> oh my god, just in case. <laughs> no need. Oh man, so, so now that we're done with. The top MCs. I think it's time to move to the new segment of Against the Grain. Woo boy. Let's go. Your askets, man. We each go. Yeah. Yeah. You know, Against the Grain, you know, we each bring two things to the table where it may not be that popular with mainstream people, but that's how we feel. You know where that's how we feel. So I'm going to go first as usual with this one. Um, I don't believe the saying happy wife. Happy, happy life, happy, well, excuse me. I don't believe the saying happy wife, happy life is cool. I believe it's a piece of bullshit. You feel me? I believe that statement places all of the man's happiness on whether or not the wife is happy. Mm -hmm. What about the husband's happiness? Shit, the saying should be both of y'all motherfuckers <laughs> happy, then it's a happy life. Shit, just because she happy don't make me happy. What if I'm having a bad day and she fucking happy? That ain't just going to make me happy. Oh, you happy not my day. I got, no, one. Fuck that. got one. I need to be happy in the house too. Shit. What she eat don't make me shit. So her happiness. Where's the love? Don't, don't move my happiness. You see? You mean, you mean like, I just feel the statement. It's, it's old and, and it's, it's time for something new. That's a statement from the archaic days. Let's bring something new. Y'all want to change everything else and cancel shit? Cancel that motherfucking bullshit. And let's bring something new to this thing. I got one for you, Now, Faith. my second one? I got one for you, Faith. Go ahead. Happy spouse, happy house. Because y'all both spouses. Boom. I like it. I like that. I like that, yo. That's some good shit. We need to cancel a happy, happy wife, happy life. We need to bring in happy spouse, happy house. Mm -hmm. God damn right. I fucks with it. My number two. This may not be that uncommon, but I strongly believe in this. I would rather a person teach me how to make a million dollars than a person just give it to me. With the knowledge of how to make it, I could continuously just make more and make more and make more. You feel me? You just give me that money. If I don't know what to do with it, I'm going to blow all that shit. Then I'm back to zero again. But with knowledge, I can continue to make my own. You feel me? Because you taught me how to do it. Now I'm going to just keep on doing it and doing it and doing it and doing it and doing it. So my one million turns into more me rather than my one million turns into no me. Give me the money. That's my two. What about y'all? What y'all got to say this week? 
Whoo. Um, well, I guess I'll go ahead and rattle some cages here. Um, I would rather, uh, oh, I no longer believe the majority of people are good. I think it's just a few of us out here. And most people are horrible folk. I used to, when I was younger, believe that like the, the general population was good people. And it was like a few, you know, bad apples that just kind of, you know, affect. But no, the internet era and, and the past few years have shown me, no, most people are horrible. There's just a few people out here with good heart. So that's my first I, I, I agree with that. I've, I've actually agreed with that since I was 12. Oh, well, there you go. <laughs> I'm, I'm 38 now. Well, there you go. Oh, fuck. I don't like humans. Fuck humans. I had a jump on the train with you earlier, Paul. Fuck humans. <laughs> um, yeah. Um, my next one kind of goes with that one, though. Um, uh, I'm about sick of the Democratic Party. I don't give a damn that I'm black. I'm I'm pretty cool with withholding my vote until the party respects my vote, or until we just have our own party. Like, I, I'm I'm just at that point. Like, uh, I'm done with broken promises from them. And they're no, they're, they're like, I don't see where my life changes when they come in the office. Like, so what the fuck? Just, if my mama had the same shit with Republicans in office, with, with damn it, then I don't give a fuck. Like, until I can mm -hmm. get my own shit or until one of these parties respect my vote, man, fuck. It. And uh, that's why we are going for the past right. two years. Shit, I don't vote for the Democrat. I don't vote, and I ain't voted in the past two elections. And I refuse to vote to I hear some new shit out they must out of somebody motherfucking mouth. You feel me? People been mad at me for the past like young vote. You black need to vote. Who the fuck I'm gonna vote for? The lesser of two evils. Why well, I gotta vote for an evil? The fuck? Well, well you join the Well, you know, I've been at Democrats neck every time ever since. Fucking buy the been in office, so you now man, fuck them. He's horrible. Uh, he is, yeah, he, he is a limp noodle president. It's not that he's he's horrible. He just don't do shit. You know what I'm saying? Oh. It's it's like that saying that um you made all them damn promises and you get oh we didn't do man, man. Fuck out of here man. You know how they tell people you know even if, hmm? go ahead. What do you say, Faith? Go ahead. Well, I. I was gonna say, you know how people say like, um, if if you white and you don't say nothing about it, or you just sit back idly by while it's keep going, you're a racist along with them. He is the personification of that shit. Mm -hmm. Period. Yep. Just he's sitting there, just the laughing the away with. He's sitting in the passenger side of the uh, truck while everybody out there lynching the black man. Mm. I just don't think he's directly doing. Hell on the road, but he damn sure ain't stop, stopping or calling the authorities. I I just don't think this is. Oh well, I guess I should. This probably be a third against the grain out of the blue, just as we talk about it. But I just don't think people that will not be affected by a vote or a particular um or a particular idea should vote on that idea. He has the voting rights has no effect on Biden at all, even if he wasn't president, even if he was a regular person or whatever, he, at, at his core or whatever, it does not have no effect on him at all, like, period. At all. Mm -hmm. Like, maybe Kamala, and maybe a little saying, bit more. And you're saying, so you're saying he shouldn't have a vote, is that I'm making sure this No, it's not even a shit even have a vote, it's just that I'm just saying the people that we have that is trying to push something, they don't naturally care about it anyway because their life don't depend on it. Gotcha. But they represent people that it they that their life depend on these things or whatever. Yeah, that's, so, that's out of touch with their constituency. So how can we trust the uh the Democrats like that? It's like it's like rep Republicans in sheep's clothing, pretty much. And they still they still bought out by the company, which is they're dino. pretty much they're dino Democrats in name on dinos. It's like it's like they 
it's like the Democrats are like, what I'm trying to say, they secret Republicans with charities. It, that's what it is. It just seems like they're Republicans with charities, the same mindset or whatever. Like you, you're voting Republican or whatever, but you're giving the charity for people in those areas that you're actually voting against. That's that's what that's what Democrats are. Whatever. So, yeah, I guess that was a, a ill the honorary against the green because that wasn't my we'll initial take one. My Mine's a bit more simpler. Uh, mine is maybe leaving you on read is not that bad. It's it's not that bad to sometimes I forget. What the fuck you just say? Leaving you on read, like when you're you you, you know when you look at your, your text messages you just say or whatever. What the fuck you when just you, say? <laughs> Leave you <on> red. <laughs> Leave you on red, nigga. Red, red, read, red. Red, nigga. Red. Not like it's not telling you to read. It's telling you I've read it. Think of- oh man, man, it's late at night, man. I'm tired, <laughs> and I'm reading it off of it. So when I read, <laughs> read. Mm-hmm. All right, leaving you on red is not that bad. Okay, my bad. It's not that bad. I just forgot. <laughs> oh, shit. Yeah, bro. So what you say? <laughs> Look, not, I didn't make it in the comments, okay? All right. <laughs> Shit, shit. This is red to me. This is fucking red to me, or whatever. So when I read it, or whatever, if I see, read, if I see read, uh, subconsciously, I'm automatically gonna say read. Oh, just uh, oh, just uh, no. I'm gonna keep going because it's gonna be more content anyway. Oh, and then the face oh, gonna keep laughing. Oh. I got confused. This nigga said, this is red to me. So you didn't know that they're homophones and shit? No, I knew. I just forgot. <laughs> well, let us... um. Don't blame me. Blame the public school system. And continue, fuck y'all. <laughs> let's continue to read the docket, y'all. <laughs> Next, I'm going to re- read from my docket. <laughs> This is what I'm reading right here in <laughs> with my hoodie with the red. I didn't know this is how the website Reddit got started right here. Mm-hmm. Matter was somebody sent somebody a text message that said, Hey man, read it. What? Read it? <gasps> That's my dot com. <laughs> you have do a nod and all that shit. Yeah, yeah. And somebody didn't understand a homophone. Cause it, cause they were sleepy. Oh fuck my last one! I already gave two, <laughs> and I think I did enough fuckery for the years. So, is it that time yet? <laughs> boy, boy, I mean her face was like that. Man, that that was enjoyable. That was a good one there, man. Boy, that boy said, <laughs> leaving somebody on read. Is you're right? It's not that bad because nobody does that. <laughs> but I do, okay. So when if I do it or whatever, it's not that bad. All right. I don't give a goddamn if I said something wrong. Y'all act like y'all never did something grammatically wrong or whatever. Y'all grammar Nazis and shit. And whoever the com- whoever's in the comments or whoever listening or whatever, y'all want to judge on me. I like I act like I ain't never said nothing stupid. Some of y'all, some of y'all could, some of y'all ignore. Some of y'all got some badass accents, whatever. Some of y'all are uglier than me, so shut up. <laughs> all right, now I said all that fuckery. Time to get to the good and fuckery, because it's about that time, y'all. Episode 63, season three, and Face is still laughing in the background. Good and fuckery, yeah. Good and fuckery! Boy. We got we got Trigger Man Pat this evening, boy. He is on. I'm loving this shit, boy. This is the best episode ever. 
if y'all missed this one, man, fuck you. You are wild. This is the best episode of the partners today. I'm trying to tell y'all. Y'all better get down. I'm trying. Oh, man. Face came so, back. A girl with boy. That nigga over there crying. <laughs> <laughs> Still got some of that oh, blunt man. left. Over there, face. Man, yeah, you still do. Oh, yeah, you still do. You might need it. All right. So as I was making my good and fuckery list, um, I noticed that, hey, you know what? Some of these topics, mm, I'm going to add some other topics. So I might skip around on the list. And some of these, after a while looking at them, I don't give a goddamn about them. So yeah. But <laughs> to be God honest with you, you know. Yo, I don't I mean, know who this new pet is. I don't know whether it's these bank loans he talking about taking. I don't know whether it's the big boss talk he on, but I, I'm personally a fan. Can we keep can we keep this pack going like for the rest of infinity? Like this this is this is the pack we need. This is the pack that people need right here. God damn it, I'm loving this pack. Paul, let let me let me talk to the rest of them. Y'all know, y'all know. Want to keep? You want me to continue with it? Because I was going to do it. You know, if you want, okay. Vote is up. All right, we back. All right, yeah. It's this Padawan tonight, and the first thing we talking about is the Royal Rumble 2022. Because fuck everything else. I watched All that right shit. That sh- and I love the Royal Rumble. Even if I don't know, if I if I been away from wrestling for a while, I don't even know the wrestlers. Was Royal it, Rumble is... Was it still is, nostalgic? Is, yeah, and it's always dope every single time. Even if I don't care about none of the wrestlers, it ends up being dope. Well, tell me like, about it. I actually know the wrestlers. Uh, Who won? All right. So it started off with Roman Reigns versus Seth freaking Rollins. And if y'all have not they were the first uh, been up, that was the, no, they were the first match, the first oh, match okay, for the Universal yeah, Championship. Yeah. Oh, they started off with that. Come on, or Seth. whatever. Come on, Seth. Now, if if y'all ain't up on it, Roman Reigns have been on a a, a one like he 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 hook, he hooked up with Paul Heyman. Paul Heyman turned him into the Samoan Brock Lesnar, basically. Not to just what Roman Reigns has done, or whatever. Um, he got the Usos in his camp. They have be- they they're like a Samoan That's nation fun. of domination out yeah. this piece, pretty much. It's going the fuck in. Him as a heel, as a villain, is is dope, pretty much. And then we got Seth freaking Rollins, the guy that broke up the shield, the guy that caused all the controversy. And, and let me tell you, in Triple Eight. Yes, I said. Yes, it. I said it. Yes, yes, and. This is how it started off. You know, Roman Reigns came out in his traditional, um, you know, entrance and everything that he's been coming out with. But Seth Rollins been getting in this nigga's head. And he came out in this with the shield entrance. When they're coming out of the rafters in the crowd with the shield, he had his shield uniform on. Come on, Seth. Let's go. Let's go, Rollins. Now the whole, yes, sir. Now the whole time. Reigns have been raining. He's been calm. He's been cool. Been acting like a mob boss. This, this, this one, he's been acting like an animal. And at first, Seth was like too fast for the nigga. Like, he was just way too fast. And then, and then, but every time Roman Reigns would come back, he would start laughing in his face or whatever, laughing. And Roman Reigns was like, nigga, you're losing. Why the fuck are you laughing? Like, he was doing a, he was doing some old Joker shit, basically. But, at the end, spoiler alert, everybody, uh, Eric, uh, Roman Reigns got disqualified because he put him in a chokehold and he was so pissed that he didn't take him out the chokehold. Period. I don't like these little dis- I hate matches that end like that. Like, I want to clean it. I hate, I, I hate it too. <laughs> he deserved it. He deserved it. And then know. afterwards. I don't know that, but give me a clean finish. Yeah. At, but but afterwards, it's all part of the drama. But afterwards, he just went to town, just grabbed chairs, beating the shit out of self, just beating the like it was just it was brutal afterwards. It was brutal. It was brutal. But yeah, that was 
That was the first match. That's how they started it off. Okay, WWE, y'all, y'all really trying to fight off AEW. I like the Royal Rumble more than I like WrestleMania. I'm telling y'all right now, I just all around like get back on my episode. The next was the women's Royal Rumble match. And let me tell you, man, it was dope. Like <laughs> the women's, like these women's matches nowadays, like they I sometimes I like them better than the actual like the men's matches, yo. Like no, these women can really wrestle now. Like it, they can like wrestle that. like divas and shit. Like they they get it in. And even the ones that you don't think can wrestle or wrestling like hard. Was man, like, in the Royal Rumble or did she fight in the main event or something? She was she was number one. Okay. Okay. She was number one. And Come she on. was hanging in there. Oh, Sasha. Oh, you said she was. Oh, okay. I already know. She was hanging in there. She came out there with the Sailor Moon costume and everything, but at no the bueno. end, no bueno. No bueno. Wait, no what? bueno. I don't know. Huh? Who won? Who won? Let me get to it. Let me get to it. Oh. Or whatever. So um, you know, Charlotte Flair was around at the end. Um I can't get really. Let me just say who the last two are. Where Charlotte Flair and Ronda Rousey. Mm, Rowdy Rousey back. Okay. Mm-hmm. And, it, and it, she was putting in work. Just, just putting in work, y'all. Just putting in work. She would literally get like when she came out. All of them was like, "Oh shit!" Still got legit. <laughs> I mean, you know. And she just put them in the corner. Like, she, man, she bulldozed everybody. Like, was just going through everybody, man. And she putting people in the corner, giving them the dukes, and then just eliminating them. That shit was crazy. And she won. Ronda Rousey won. So who's Charlotte she, Flair. Bianca uh, Belair, right? Nah, Charlotte Flair is the, is the champion right so now. Charlotte Flair in the, in the Royal Rumble and it was the champion. She's a flair. I'm like, how the fuck if she win? Like, if she wins, she gets to pick who. Her. It if she wins, she gets to put pick who faces her. Man, I'm glad she ain't win. Mm, of course, of course. But she she did her work. She she went to town. She went to town when she was in there, I don't and she cleared. That, she she cleared it, and then. She, the dumb thing was the way she tried to charge at Ronda Rousey when they first, when they first, uh, like was facing off, and everybody realized that you know Eric, they were the last two. Unless you and them and make charge at Ronda Rousey. Stupid, stupid. I think <laughs> she maybe thought, cheap, bitch. Yeah, I think she might have thought that, um, like her height and whatever could. Balance all that off, but no, nah, it won't. It Indeed. won't work. <laughs> um, this one I didn't really care too much for, or whatever <laughs> at all. It was a, and it's not. I just didn't care too much about it. It was the Raw Women's Championship or whatever, and it was Becky Lynch versus this wrestle, random wrestling named Dewdrop, and it was she, Dewdrop is a big oh, wrestler. Right? Okay, she she like yeah. she kind of look crazy, right? Yeah, she kind of looked crazy, real happy one or whatever. She, I just the first time I haven't really seen her because I haven't been into wrestling in a while. Yeah. But I always did the man the win. Rumble. Come on, uh, the man. come on, the man did the yeah, man. Yeah, Be- Becky won. Becky won. Yes. She barely won. Yes, we kicking lives. She barely won. <clears throat> Coming out she, kicking lives. She won. She won. Yo, Becky, Becky, uh, female Stone Cold. Yo, I rock with her. Yeah, she she kind of was. She was. I kind of want to see her and Lita fight. And Lita was in the Royal Rumble also. Just let y'all know. Get her in. Spoiler alert. Becky, that, Becky, that oh. real deal. Mm. But uh, the next one was yeah, WWE. The next one was the WWE Championship, pretty much. And that that's the Raw, basically, the Raw Championship, pretty much. And... Mm. BL versus BL. Brock Lesnar versus Bobby Lashley. Mm. 
Mm-hmm. Now, come on, Brock. <clears throat> Brock has even I'm was joking on that. In the build up for this match, in this build up for this match or whatever, Brock was just like basically saying, Bobby Lashley, you is just a fake version of me. Basically. What a song. Bobby Lashley is like, is like you've been ducking me and avoiding me for all these years and stuff like that. But let me get into the match or whatever. It was a suplex. It was a suplex championship to me. Whatever, oh, so like they were like Goldberg, <clears throat> like uh, Yo. Goldberg did. Mm, like Brock Lesnar, you know he's like the biggest dude there is right now. But like he was doing suplexes, but it wasn't the same effect. You know, Brock Lesnar suplex you. You usually you usually on the mat for a good minute. It looked like he just pissed Bobby Lashley off. <laughs> A couple of times. So they were in a suplex complex, uh, I said complex, a suplex uh, competition <laughs> for a good while or whatever. And uh, yeah, like it looked like after a while though, um, it was pretty much even, to tell you the truth. Um, but uh, yeah, this was kind of a screw job championship because out of the blue Roman Reigns came in speared Brock Lesnar um, beat him down went over to Paul Heyman or, or whatever and says give me the give me the belt hit Brock Lesnar with the belt then walks away and then Paul Heyman walks with Roman Reigns surprisingly and then Bobby Lashley takes the win oh shit yeah, so well, yeah, that was that was a match, man. I ain't gonna lie. Even though it ended up with a screw job, and they they probably gonna build it up for like maybe WrestleMania or whatever. But I'm here. For yeah, it. that was it. It's still a good job. All right, the next match is still. I mean, it was an entertaining match, but it's still a match I I could give two fucks about or whatever. But um, it was the Miz and his wife. Um. I always fuck her name up. Marisi, Marisi, I don't know. It was Miz and his wife versus Edge and Beth Phoenix. <clears throat> Beth Phoenix being Edge's wife, pretty much. And eh, it was one of those mixed matches or whatever. It was it was funny, but I, I, at the same time, I don't care because it's the Miz and I. He's not that awesome to me. <laughs> I don't really care too much about that. So we fast forward to the real thing, the men's Royal Rumble match. All right. It doesn't, it doesn't matter who's in the match. It's a 30-man match where people go in and start fighting. That's pretty much as it is. It's, it started off dope. Yeah, AJ Styles versus Shinsuke Nakamura. And I've been following these two, these two beefs. Like, they, they used to have, like, title matches outside of WWE and like the Japanese league and all that other stuff. So, yeah. Um, the, I would say really, it just, everybody just came out and did a couple of things. I mean, it, it wasn't really too big of, like, it wasn't that many exciting things that happened or whatever. It just was like a fun match to watch all in all, as far as Royal Rumble matches. Um, Mm-hmm. Pretty much, uh, who I would say, especially since there's a lot of new people, I don't really care too too much about for. Uh, I like that dude Montez Ford, and since it's Black History Month or whatever, that right. dude Montez Ford, um, that's um Bianca Belair's um uh, boyfriend or whatever. Yeah, he's he's pretty athletic, man. That dude was flipping all over the place. Or whatever. I feel like I wish they would do more with the character, but I probably probably because of my black bias. worker program. That would be dope. That'd be dope. Um, the dude almost came in. He's basically the new Kane in the in the in the, in the match, pretty much. He was pretty much the biggest dude there. Um, let's who it. What's that dude name, man? I forgot. It's he gets on my damn nerves. 
and I'm trying to find him on the freaking list or whatever. He has that um Dusty huh? Rose. Dusty. <laughs> Dusty Rose. No, nah, not Dusty. Oh, uh Corbin. Baron Corbin. Cor- Baron Corbin, but now he's happy Corbin because they can't find any type of gimmick that's that can make him pop. He done made much. a lot of gimmick. Yeah, and I mean, I like like he got he got that one move, um, the end of days, and I feel like he's a good wrestler and all, but he just, as far as the character goes, he's he's pretty boring, pretty much. Some people just ain't got. No, no, no. They Come screwed over Kofi Kingston. Me, feel like they screwed over Kofi Kingston or whatever, and whatnot. I mean, Kevin Owen, Kevin Owens was out there somehow for some reason. Um, Bad Bunny, uh, the reggaeton artist, is still in, in wrestling, wrestling right now. And I forgot he was. Mm-hmm. I thought that was like a cameo. I didn't realize he was like a, doing a David. He's still Arquette wrestling. Thing. He's still wrestling. He actually eliminated some people too, or whatever. Um, then, then Randy Orton came out. Things kind of change. He came out looking victorious. Looked like he was about to do the. Um, my um Maya Angelou posed on the quarter and everything, and he he pretty dominated, and it was St. Louis, and you know that's his hometown, so it, it got real. And then you know I'm, his um I'm, Randy or the, I'm all right with the RKO. Yeah, the yeah, those those RKOs are just like oh man, I it's like between RKO and the Stone Cold Stunner, it's like it's. I like the RKO because like, it ain't no setup with it. It ain't no kick. It ain't no nothing. It's, no, it just it's out of nowhere. Happens. You know? it's like, yeah, it's the diamond cutter. It's whatever's happening. Well, gotcha. You, ne- you never know gotcha, what's gonna happen. Yeah. Ne- yeah. Never know what's gonna happen. But I was successful, man. Randy Orton is. I don't know that he underrated, but I don't think he always get the praise he deserved for his in in ring work. Like he's a really. Yeah, I think. Wrestler. I, I really wish they had like a good, I mean they've had before, but I wish they would come back with another like Randy Orton one, pretty much because, like, uh, I think he just in any situation if you put him in any situation it becomes real interesting real quick, pretty much. But all in all, he'll um, punt yeah. You said you're a front of a, a fan of who? I said he'll punt a bitch down the stairs. Oh, that shit is crucial too. And I always pick that that move in the game. Anyway, because it's effective. Yeah. Shoot, it's, it's effective in real life. Yep. Mm-hmm. Um, I even I think they um I think they banned him from actually using it though. Oh. I, I wouldn't think so. I know they had but that. I know I think he's I think they I don't know. And they might have allowed him to do it, but I think it was a time they banned him from doing it. But all right, let me stop all the suspense. So the winner was Brock Lesnar. So he got it at 30. Oh, okay. I was about to say, like, oh, he had a time to recuperate because I'm like, mm-hmm. he cleared everything up. He was at he was at 30 and he's Brock Lesnar. And now we're probably going to have Brock BL versus BL2. Brock Lesnar versus Brock Lesnar. Bacon and lettuce versus bacon and lettuce. Let me stop. I'm joking. You mean Bobby? <laughs> Bobby Lashley. Okay, gotcha. Fair four. <laughs> well, that's a Brock Lesnar versus Brock Lesnar too. Uh huh. Uh huh. I, I was I was trying to lay off. According all- to Brock Lesnar, that's the truth. I, I you say he's fake Brock Lesnar again. So I was gonna leave you alone, bro. You know, but yeah, you uh, <laughs> whew, them words is uh backed up in there tonight. It's all right, man. I'm I'm I, I've I've been running. For the past four days, and yeah, I'm a little out of it, but it's all right. It's okay. I'm saying that to myself. <laughs> it's all right. It's okay. <laughs> Probably nothing to rhyme with that, but yay. Um, some of these I'm gonna fly through. All right, there's going to be a new comic book event. It's gonna call it Judgment Day. It's basically X Men versus Avengers versus the Eternals. I'm gonna say this real quick. Whatever. I hope the X Men whoop the Eternals' ass. That's all I care about. 
I just hope the X Men whip the Eternals ass. I don't see it coming. I don't know, man. That's tough. The Eternals from the movie Eternals, like those that iteration, like Icarus and all of them, or are you talking about like Eternals from other planets? No, the Eternals from the actually it's all the Eternals. It's gonna be from the ones from the movie and base. Well, let me put you up on game with people in the comic book. The Eternals are now being ruled by Thanos on the low. Oh. And I, and uh, somewhere, I think the Avengers is really going to be like trying to be the peacekeepers between the two or whatever. But, you know, they got to build it up so they quit versus for everybody. But this is the this is the kicker. They I think they retconning and for people that don't know comic book terms, retcon is when a writer comes in and like changes the origin of a known comic book in some type of way to fit the story basically so they're technically retconning but it's still not really that much of a retcon because they have said this before but they're retconning mutants to be qualified as deviants and if you know the history of eternal that's the main thing about eternals they fight deviants to make sure that mutants are going to evolve deviants no they're they're how I say they're they're getting skewed on their um, way they view mutants. They're basically viewing mutants as deviants or whatever, instead of viewing mutants as evolved humans. Pretty so much, and that's are evolved deviants, or they're just not evolved deviants at all. They're just they're deviants. Not, deviants are they're just, just not a different iteration of deviants. In yeah, general. So yes, like, yeah. Uh, I'm I'm thinking they're going, they haven't gone into it yet or whatever, because this event is coming in the summer, but they're basically another version of Deviant. Can we finally get Pretty you to cool. review that? And can we get you to uh because uh yeah, this stuff would be better <laughs> easier for me to understand if I got like a tutorial every once in a while from uh Pat's corner. You know, I got you. The same. I got you. We love the comic book content. So. Gotta get this uh this going but i know i have plenty of time prepared because this is coming out in like may pretty much okay cool. much and these I'm things excited. change all the time it's gonna be an epic war i, I love to see an icarus and a cyclops battle they actually in the front cover they actually got like cyclops and icarus on the side or whatever um but i hope they whoop their ass i hope cyclops whoops icarus ass in the eye beam blast. I think he has a stronger eye beam blast. I'm I'm all team mutants. Fuck fuck the eternal. <laughs> <coughs> fuck them. Right on. I don't on. care if they like don't the mutants you. before Thank mutants. You. Fuck them. X-Men all the way. Anyway. <laughs> um push a T is I don't got no segues. Fuck them. Push a T <laughs> reveals he's no longer a part of good music. He got all of his masters. Ooh. It's coming out. And you must, um, and I mean, still, everything is still good between him and Kanye or whatever, because Kanye actually signed off on it. So he got all of his masters for his music. Um, and he's starting his new record label. Oh, okay. Does he have a name? So as, um, Airwave, I believe. Let me get right into it. Um, because I've I've been hearing rumblings around here. You know, this is seven five seven. This is pretty pretty much the push a T hub. But I've been hearing um about this for a while, um, pretty much. But I believe his name is Air is Airwave, like Air H E I R Wave. Got it. Mhm. Okay. So he's right, he's it. starting that up. Well, and the album party. Album, new album's coming out soon, and people are saying that people try to say, Hey, this album of the year, man, push it on yeah. me. No dud. <clears throat> the boy rap, nah. the boy rap, straight like that. The boy rap, he do rap. I mean, even they shoot Drake, even used a line for a caption in his Instagram with a video with him and his son, <clears throat> pretty much. So I just actually saw that not before we. Around, huh? <clears throat> so 
But yeah, um, Ter- uh, something else I saw, Terrence Williams' brother, uh, Baby and Slim from Cash Money, gotcha. is freed from a life sentence. This oh, wow. Serious, so he'd say. When was the last time Nash- they saw him? Hmm? When was the last time they saw him? I've never even heard of him. Yeah, exactly. I think he been in there since since they've been doing cash money pretty much. Oh wow. Yeah, like well, he coming out to some millions. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah, he's been he was sentenced like for past about 20 plus years, like 27.5 years or whatever. He's been resentenced to. So um he should be getting out. A couple of years. I, they don't actually say like when he's actually getting out, but they say they resentence it, so he's out of the life sentence right now. Pretty much. Well, welcome home, brother. Uh, that's a hell of a long time to be down. I'll tell you that. Um, quick one. Not a Black History Month. Viola Davis is coming out with a movie called The Woman King. Who is that? Viola Davis. <laughs> From uh, you know she and Luella, Viola Davis. Oh, Viola, I just misheard you. I'm sorry. Oh yeah, Viola Davis. She's um, you know, she was Amanda Waller, Suicide Squad, and uh, a whole lot of other action <laughs> movies too. But that me as a comic book kid, that's the first one I remember, Don't or whatever. Me. But tell them face. Let it go. <laughs> <laughs> Well, I said her name wrong. It's Viola Davis. Ah, oh, well, I'm gonna say everybody's name all one day. <laughs> Viola Davis. Your face was gonna crack, yo. I thought he was gonna hold it. Your face could never be on Saturday Night Live, yo. He he words that Jimmy Fallon used to be. <laughs> be breaking character like shit. <laughs> this is Davis. <clears throat> oh man. But, but um. <laughs> Oh shit. <laughs> but uh it's supposed to be coming out. Uh Sony is releasing it. It's coming out in September the 16th. Um much. And uh she plays I'm going to mess up this name too cuz this is probably an African name and it's Nanaska. Nanaska? N A N I S C A. Nanaska. Nanaska. I was about to say that. <laughs> Please say it one more time. Nanaska. It's going to be dope if that's actually how you pronounce the name. Man. It sounds like a water, like Nanisha. like Dazani, like Aquafina. See the Nanisha or Nanisha. I promise. Not Nanaska. That's an N A N I S C A. I can't make an ah. I promise you, it can't. I'm working on phonetics with my son. I, I, I'm not trying to be funny no more. Like I'm just, just, just stop. Naski, na 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 ska, na 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 ska. Ooh na na na. It's the way that we ska when we doing our thing. The woman king. <laughs> Oh, Wayne The Rock Johnson is doing the Call of Duty movie. <laughs> um, yep, Dwayne The Rock Johnson is doing the Call of Duty movie. Uh, the actual, uh, not only that, the writers of the Mortal Kombat, the next Mortal Kombat movie, want him as Shao Kahn. I can see that. Yep, I can see it too. And, yeah. and Jeremy Slater is going to be writing the Mortal, um, Mortal Kombat 2 movie. And he's also the writer of Disney Plus uh, series Moon Knight. Okay, because so, I was like, who is that? I don't know that guy. I'm sorry. Yeah, I was getting to it. But yeah, he's writing Moon Knight. And I would say 
yeah, he's if he he seems like he's getting jobs at back to back. So I'm kind of excited about seeing what's going on, especially if they get the right with Shao Kahn. Hmm. Moon Knight must be really good then if he's getting like a bunch of deals all of a sudden right after that. I mean, people who done seen that, because I haven't seen it yet, but apparently. I yeah, it, I mean, no one, it don't come out until like March, so, you know, but the scenes that people in Hollywood. Right, they talking. Okay, yeah, Jerry, exactly. later, I'll be on the lookout. Yep. Uh, Jason Moma is joining Fast and Furious. <coughs> oh, shit. God damn it, man. I can't. I can't. I quit. I'm done for the night, man. Damn, Damn, one more time. Damn. I don't know what's, Damn, what's his name. Hey, Aquaman is on his fast. Jason Moa. Jason Momoa. Jason Momoa. 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 Oh, but what did you call him? Please, say, please say it again. Jason Moa. <laughs> Jason Momoa. Oh, I, thought I don't you know. know. I, I'm over here weak. I'm enjoying the hell out of this. I might it might be the it might be the Wi-Fi, but I said Momoa. Okay. Yeah, but they they're planning on I think he's gonna be a villain, pretty much. But just because why do they I keep think, making these damn movies, man? Like how many times money. are gonna be fast and furious? <clears throat> nigga, I don't care, nigga. How many cars can you wreck? Like, all right, we got it. What you gonna drive now? Okay. Teslas? Like what what is the new like what? <sighs> It's a it's a copy and paste movie, man. It's a it's a it's a copy and paste movie, man. Unless you're gonna give me a rock and Tyrese uh roasting session again, I'm good. I'm good. But that shit was funny. But yeah, Jason forehead. Jason Momoa or Jason Momo, as I think <laughs> Tiz thought I would say it. I would just keep calling him that because it's even funny and I've been fucking up everybody else's name. So why not fuck that? Nah, nah, stop. <laughs> nah, 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 stop. Viola. Violin Davis. Oh, Lord. Anyway, I'm practicing. I'm practicing. Where Violin Davis. Go. Jason Momo. <laughs> All right, another name is gonna mess up. All right, because he's he's been acting crazy lately. Um, uh, the Flash, who's gonna come out with the Flash movie in the end of this year, basically. Um, Ezra Miller delivers a, a delivers a cryptic message to the Ku Klux Klan in South oh, uh, North Carolina. What? 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 Oh, hold on! You went from the Flash to some to some Ku Klux Klan. Wait, wait a minute. A exactly, that's how crazy it is. The guy that plays the Flash. Ezra Miller, a little, um, a little white boy. Yeah, randomly Young? on um from from mm -hmm. the uh, Justice League movie. Mm hmm. Randomly, um, on in his Instagram for some reason, um, he basically told the Ku Klux Klan of North Carolina to go kill themselves or that he can help. And yeah, he basically says, "Look, if y'all want to die, I'm saying it like he said it. If y'all want to die." I suggest you just killing yourselves with your own guns. Otherwise, keep doing exactly what you're doing and you know what I'm talking about. Then, you know, we'll do it for you. And that's really what you want. Talk to you soon. Okay, bye. That's what he said. I don't know what it's for. Ezra Miller. You said what? Tiz stands with Ezra Miller. I stand with him too. I don't know what started this. I really don't care what started this. But yeah, my vote. Hey. I don't know what's happening, but I'm with it. Uh, all right. It's never. It's never going to be a time where I'm actually going to be. On Come on, allies. So. All right. Mm -hmm. it, it's coming from the flash, but okay. Respect. All right. Respect. I, I'm gonna. I'm gonna finish this. China's working on military robots. They. They look. Once again, they look like uh, they look like dogs. It looks really big. One of them calls like a yak, but they're, they're still doing stuff along with making a sun. So yeah, China's still doing crazy shit. Um, and at the same time, Elon Musk is working on a humanoid robot also. So oh, they're yeah. all the Matrix is coming. They, they're all building up so we can all die out slowly. It's the new by robots. All right. Who can build a robot? But 
But the one person who is fighting back against the eventual extinction of the human race by robots, the one hero on our side, Gilbert Gottfried, is Nick Cannon. Is Nick Cannon. Nick Cannon to fight back. He is making more humans by the day. He is trying he's to on his and populate the earth. Yeah, because he's on his eighth child mm-hmm. like, now. It, it's just been announced. Didn't he say he was celibate? Somebody bought a bit. <laughs> I don't know. Oh, man. Hey, I segued the fuck out of that one, didn't I? Yeah. Padawan. <laughs> Nanaska. Not what is happening tonight, man? What is going on? I did not know. Scott. Oh, man. Something in that water, man. Yo, something going on. As long as it ain't late. As long as it ain't late. <laughs> I'm going to skip that one. I don't care. Man, y'all heard about these three brothers that uh, beat up their stepfather because he was assault- sexually assaulting their nine-year-old sister? No, but salute to them. Shit. Mm-hmm. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. It's a petition out to uh because they got arrested pretty much. Uh and it's a petition Freedom. to get them out. Freedom. Applaud them young. Yeah, three. I don't like how they said three men in Hidalgo County, Texas, or whatever, but um we're Taken into custody of suspicion of aggravated assault and murder, the brothers Alejandro, Christian, and Trevino and their family friend Juan Eduardo Melendez are now facing charges in the connection with the death of 42-year-old Gabriel Quinn. Oh, yes, I'm going to fuck this name up too, but fuck him because he's pedophile. Quintanelia or something. I might have actually said it right. Q U I N. T A N I L L A. I spelled that to see if I spelled, if I said it right. Hmm? Quintanilla. Okay. Mm-hmm. Nanaska. Anyway. <laughs> Namaste. <laughs> but um, yeah, uh, that dude died, and I say that's a good thing, so because fuck pedophiles and and everything they stand for, and I, that's all I got to say about that. Fuck them with a sick. whatever. <laughs> Right. Indeed. And I'm going to end up the fuckery with Rihanna is pregnant. Why is that And fun? Shout out to her and Ace Rocket. Rocket. Because I like a Rihanna. That's why. It's fuckery. I like Rihanna. That okay. is the one celebrity crush I have. But beyond that, it, it wasn't the simple fact that she got pregnant and I found out about it. It's the simple fact that I found out about everybody in social media's De- declaring their love to Rihanna and saying fuck, fuck ASAP Rocky in some type of way or whatever. I was like, why is everybody giving these random pregnant Ray Rihanna memes? Oh well. Rihanna, well uh, Rihanna is one of them ones that has shaped the culture and been like the face of beauty for her era or whatever as far as like her generation, so I get it. I understand why people are distraught, but they have one man. Yeah. If finding somebody real is a fucking problem, bring your girl to the crib. He can fucking solve it. He told y'all what was what was happening. He told y'all what was up. You seen him smack the girl on the ass way way back when she was still dealing with Chris Breeze and shit over at the MTV Awards. That man been plotting for years. I shout out to him. Um, Sorry, Pat. Oh, oh. That's all right, man. Blessings oh. to Rihanna. Um, I this is all applied by the Illuminati to discourage me from my life goals. But blessings to Rihanna and their family. <laughs> oh, they ain't got nothing to do with that girl had no baby. <laughs> Hell no. <laughs> I don't give a fuck. They got to stop his life goals. Fuck the Illuminati. Ooh. Fuck Putin. Um, hey, fuck Rihanna, everybody hey. that. Reconsider, reconsider. Get his man a shot, man. For he, for he. Fuck the word read. Fuck the word read. Uh, fuck everybody's names that I fucked up tonight. Who's that face? Who's that face? You gonna find you a Jonas 7-5 look just like Rihanna. 
There you go. What happened to chicken sandwich? And they gonna be tea on or something like that. And that's why I don't really care because you know chicken sandwiches are good. Sometimes. A lot more times than just some. <laughs> Put your foot in your mouth. Oh, Jesus. This is a public room. podcast. Do I need to hit stop? No, no. I, I can't put my foot in my mouth. I ain't that flexible. Nanatska. Nananaski. Nananana. This is the wild thing ever. I, I I I tried to keep some control, y'all, but I it, it went off the rails. It's one of them ones, man. <laughs> you, in fuckery. You caught it. Episode sixty-three. Look at me looking ridiculous. Hey, hey. <laughs> <laughs> Well, man, the end of the good of fuckery usually brings us to the end of another episode. Let's go, let's go, let's go. We did another one, another one in the book. Episode six, Trey, big baby. We did it. Yay, y'all. So let's go, y'all. Y'all know what time it is. Do we got a black business? We always got at least one. Tell her what it is, face. Tell her, tell her what it is, face. Tell her, tell her, tell her what it is. Oh, damn. I thought you were going to keep going. Y'all can go to <laughs> artreeclothing.com. My chemical is A-R-T-R-E clothing.com. Hey, come get your part of the merchandise. Come get your art straight three. Saves you a little bit of money on the back end, on the front end, and all between. Um, we got hoodies, long sleeves, short sleeves. We got pants, um, face masks, flu monkey out. Um, got a lot of stuff there, man. Socks, hats, all that shit. Check us out. I'm trying to pay. Then they got after pay. Then they got that after pay. Yeah, you gotta pay the whole thing at once. Indeed, that's one of the coolest things about it. And make yeah. sure when you buy your merch, yeah. man, when you get your shit and you put it on, send us a picture, man. Let, let, you know what I'm saying? Let, 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 let us see you out there in your AC83, your partner's merch, man. Indeed. Send that picture, man. Indeed. Send that picture so we can put it on the media. Hey, I'm still looking for somebody to send a picture so we can put you on the actual Art Fake Clothing page, man, as the head of header picture. Still looking for somebody, man. So I'll send some pictures. I got a few people in my head I've seen pictures of, but I'm trying to get some other pictures out there. February is coming up. Hey, by you and your spouse or you and your significant other, some Art Fake Clothing, put it on together, take a picture, send it. Y'all may be on the head of the actual Art Fake Clothing page for a while. Oh, Never know. Yeah. Let's see. Go ahead, get your fashion model on out there, people. Come on, Pod Squad. Make it happen. And if you want to support financially and you've already got your R Trade clothing merch or your partner's merch, then go ahead, man. And you can always donate at Cash App, dollar sign, partner tears one. That's Cash App, P O D N A T I Z one. <laughs> Excuse me. I'm going to try that again. That's Dollar sign, P-O-D-N-A-T-I-Z-1. And uh, you can also donate at buymeacoffee.com backslash the partners. Um, there you can donate for as little as a dollar or you can sign up for a monthly membership, which gives you exclusive access and membership perks um, that only Pod Squad members who are members there get. Um, you also get, um, you also can support, I mean, at anchor.fm backslash the hyphen partners. Um, anchor.fm backslash the hyphen you. podcast. You. Listen to the podcast there. You can also leave us a voice message that can become part of the podcast there. But you can also can become 
a monthly supporter for $4.99. So those are the ways you can financially support. And once you've done support, man, if you want to chop it up with us or just talk to us or get in touch with us, how can you do that, Pat? At T-H-E-P-O-D-N-A-S. Man, I got this down like a science. At T-H-E-P-O-D-N-A-S. That is the Instagram. That's the TikTok. That's the Twitter. Shoot, ain't that the Twitch? Yes, it is. Hey, and Tiz Face mm-hmm. Pat mm-hmm. are the partners mm-hmm. on Facebook. That's the way you can get to it, pretty much. Indeed. Well, man, then another one, fella. How y'all feeling, man? I go for two. Good. Good and good and good. Well, I stayed up at Rose 63. I have been your boy, Tiz. And I've been along with. It's the other third of the paddle. I fucked that all up. (laughs) It's the other third of the partners, man. It's the Padawan. The guy that said Nanaska, Joe Momo, Violin Davis, all through this podcast. (laughs) Fucking shit up. And I am along with. Pause. <clears throat> Extended pause. Oh, that motherfucker. Oh. Boy, he's high. What was that? Now we can recommend this 5CR trade. You know? Thank y'all for coming. Anywhere else but you're here with us, keep tuning in, man. Partners. Indeed, man. And guess what? We are about this, Sky. Always a pleasure. We love y'all. Thank y'all for coming out. God bless you. Good night.